Hello and welcome to uh, this uh, uh, container 101 uh, tutorial. It's basically to cover basic, very basic fundamental concepts about uh, uh, containerization and some of the working example with uh, Docker. And because it has been a really hot market from I think past couple of years is, uh, and now more and more application developer and uh, service delivery model they are trying to containerize their application and very easy to deploy in a in especially in a cloud environment so if this will be part of like uh, 101 I'll uh, this video I will focus on a uh, few fundamental uh, wh what is container and how containerization works in a operating system environment and subsequent video will have more detailed approach like networking how the data uh, data model works and how you can actually use a uh, docker uh, based uh, uh, container to orchestrate into full uh, cloud deployment so uh, before we start uh, for anything uh, so this is uh, so container technology just an overview so container technology by itself is a it's nothing new it has been there for a long time especially in Linux environment where uh, if you have any familiar with uh, someone with the system back, uh, admin background that used to have a ch root or a j root concept where you actually type a ch root dot and it creates a virtualized file system environment which is completely independent of the parent operating system so it was a very beginning earlier stage of uh, containerization and the so the whole idea is that you you take the so uh, it, it has been always been a how you will ship the application from a developer box to the customer so what you do is contain uh, the approach of container is you take the application and put it in a container with all dependencies so unlike like previous time you used to send this a jar file or a binary file to the customer and they run boom it doesn't work some dependency failure some kind of other failure or maybe some network problem that the, the application deployment at the customer side or in the production has been a real pain so with the container technology you can bundle up everything what your application needs and just ship the container image and they will download it it will work right of the box uh, of the box without any problem so this is what so so it's a very good example the docker uh, they have uh, demonstrated the importance of container technology container actually if you com you can compare it with a actually shipping container before the shipping container were invented how people used to do is uh, take an example you have one ship and now the ship say you have some kind of a food item you have something like a clothing item without a containerized uh, approach you cannot carry both item in a same box like if obviously food item will spoil your clothing material so they came up with a container uh, based approach where you can create a segregate container and that same container like uh, and so this is one thing and then when you go to the say, uh, like this take an example this sh shipping container so this same shipping container format is such a universal that the same size it can be easily offloaded into a truck or a railway or it can be put uploaded into a ship so same container you can actually use from a customer side say I am a good maker or something so I prepare my good and put it into this container and I don't have to unload the container till it reaches the destination so the container I pack it and put it in a truck truck goes to the nearest railway station the same container without even opening it I unloaded it to a railway bogey and it goes and it unloaded into a dock and ship delivered to the destination it follows the same routine and at the end customer they actually open the container to get the good so it is a very unified approach of delivering the uh, a good so similar way you can apply on the application delivery so whenever you are looking for application you bundle everything into a container and then ship it and over there wherever you want to install it you just uh, un uh, execute the container code so I'll just talk about a little bit about container, containerization in operating system environment. So what it does is actually the how containerization came, the modern form of containerization. It actually came after Google invented a couple of years ago the uh, CG group, uh, Linux uh, uh, group. In what it allowed, it allowed already existing Linux. Uh, there was Linux class level where you can actually create a standalone uh, processor group inside a processor, like it's kind of a isolation inside a processor which can which gave the modern form of containerization so current modern form of containerization how it happens is 
when you start a process in a Linux system, so any process has a, like it has a memory, it has some computation power, it has some kind of a uh, execution unit. So all this, it can be virtualized to create a standalone unit inside the process itself. So, so the process which is running inside a container, actually it is nothing but a process. When process is running and inside the process you are starting a process in a virtualized environment, it thinks that it is running on a PC. So it is very much like a virtualization but a next level of virtualization. So there is a very nice example of showing uh, the difference, uh, fundamental difference between container and a virtual machine. So here if you see the diagram, container you have this, uh, you have the infrastructure is common on both sides and in usually in the virtual machine environment you, should, you have to install a hypervisor which could be your virtual box, it could be your KVM or a VMware and on that VMware what it does, it creates a hardware emulation layer on top of your operating system, it could be Windows or Linux and on that emulation layer you install a new operating system altogether and then you install your application and everything but in container approach especially I'm taking example of docker so you don't need to do anything just you have a host operating system you install docker and now docker will create an emulation environment for each and every application which you can call container and for an application say this these example application a and b for them nothing changes for them they are as if they are running in a uh, like bare metal hardware it doesn't change anything for these applications the only thing change is the underlying environment if you see here you can see a lot of uh, benefit of using container in some case um, i'm not saying most cases but some cases it can be very beneficial especially in a higher in a vm environment you are actually uh, same thing you are copying if you see the guest operating system is a kind of overhead you are having so much uh, you have to with any operating system you need minimum certain amount of disk usage and another thing whenever you install a virtual machine pretty much the memory when you have memory is locked for the from the uh, host so if you're installing Linux you at the beginning you say okay 4 GB of RAM and when once you install the guest now 4 GB of RAM has been locked and al allocated out of the guest host operating system even though the application A is not using the 4 GB it is still sitting there and doing nothing but in case of uh, containerized approach you can actually if the application A is using say 10, 10 GB of say or maybe uh, 10 MB of RAM that's it rest of the all resources are available to be used by any of the process running in the host so container provides a better uh, memory especially memory and uh, hardware utilization computation point yeah it, it is debatable some people say right okay with good hardware uh, it can achieve the same because in the hyper, uh, hypervisor mode you can oversubscribe the CPU but you cannot oversubscribe the memory that is where the container is a very winner but in both ways you will see that uh, docker is a, uh, like container is a more lightweight approach to virtualization although they both have their own pros and cons that we can go on uh, detail later but for now so this is just a quick highlight I have put it out like container is a obviously lightweight easy to ship and deploy virtual machines are relatively heavy even if you're talking about Amazon EC2 usually if, even if you download the EMI image it's pretty heavy compared to container container hardly it's like a few hundred MBs and it can have a higher performance because it will directly run on the host I mean it, you can run the container on a right on the bare metal compared to hypervisor which is a one extra emulation layer and uh, there are like some disadvantages like like the guest and the host operating system has to be same because they share the library and everything but in a virtual machine they can be different so you can have windows uh, guest host and a linux guest but in that case both sides it has to be linux uh, docker works for windows and mac but they are only for development purpose they are not meant and designed for production so you will pretty much it is a linux thing and uh, container yeah it, it, start pretty fast I will after this I'll show some example of just hello world kind of example VM techs are like normal virtual machine and uh, this is uh, well suited for microservices like microservices is a new buzzword in the uh, industry where everybody is moving to microservices and uh, virtual machine uh, yeah it is but it's not exactly and also like there is a concept like I have used the term cattle and pet approach so <clears throat> more and more in my infrastructure world is now moving towards cattle approach than a pet 
pet is what like you have a pet you feed the pet you pet it all the time you take care of it throughout the life cycle of pet if that is the virtual machine like you install a virtual machine and you hire a system I mean he's just doing some kind of maintenance and making sure that the system is up and running so this is one approach the cattle approach is like you create an environment and the next day you don't need just finish it just kill the environment and create a new environment but each time whenever you need environment you create a new environment rather than reusing anything so this cattle approach is very efficient and lightweight compared to the pet approach so again depending upon uh, what is your uh, goal and uh, both are uh, like these two so i'll show some of the example with the uh, docker how to actually start a container so i have just have example with docker so docker how it works actually by default if you install a docker <coughs> i install in a this is a mac example so pretty much it's a it's a out of box installation you just download and work it and in linux you can use a yum install docker and in ubuntu app install uh, app get install docker it works without any problem and you start the container uh, service and whenever you type like there are some basic command like uh, docker run it so what it does is it will try to find it mm. so whenever you try to run a docker image basically what you're doing is you are trying to pull a docker image from a docker repository which is somewhere in the cloud and you download the image pretty fast and uh, it runs right there so if when i execute this command i will just execute it you will see what it says unable to find image ubuntu latest to so mean it couldn't find any ubuntu image in my local disk so what it does it goes to the con connects to the docker uh, docker registry docker hub and it try to download any image named ubuntu there is already defined so now it see downloads the image and see uh, it is already there and uh, see it was the whole download process i'll in the next uh, a couple of subsequent session i will discuss about these uh, like different layers but for now just understand some how it downloaded the image and now after download is done it started i said run bash ubuntu so after it started ubuntu it executed the bash program so it is the bash it just started i can check uptime so <clears throat> uptime it's uh, it shows four days because it was already uh, running so this is the, this is the ubuntu box i'm talking about like here this is the ubuntu and uh, when i do if i this is a completely isolated containerized environment you can do anything on it it will not impact anything on your host operating system but yes the file and a lot of things you can mount uh, from the ho host to this uh, container and that are both side mutable so this is an exit is simple just control d you come out of c you come out of this right now i'm at the back in my guest uh, host machine and uh, and if i there are few few handy commands you can try docker ps is a command if i do docker ps hyphen a so what it does it shows you what all containers are running so it was showing see docker uh, image is this command i was running this it says exited so the moment i come out of this it actually kills the container and it's done so next time if i try to run it if i try to run the same command it will be pretty fast because see it doesn't took even like it, it hardly hardly took a couple of seconds to see because the image was already there it just had to fire up the container image and although it's starting the whole linux uh, image but because it is inside a process virtualized so it is very fast so again see i get go here uh, i'm here see i'm in the linux so so this is a just an example to understand what is docker and why it is there and uh, to give an overview of how it works so in subsequent uh, a session i'll go in more detail about everything i have the full presentation about uh, this thing so uh, till next time see you again okay thanks for watching bye